Good afternoon. I have a letter here. that I'd like to read to you all. Um, the word dear uh, is a word of greeting and it's a word of affection. Um, one that in this age of texts and tweets and emails, um, I seem to encounter less and less in my daily written communications. It's sort of ironic. Hey, how you doing? Um, is often the way, hi, is often the way a letter begins. Um, and perhaps this word dear is what drew me to this event um, here today. So here it goes. Dear LA. By LA, uh, I don't mean that I'm gonna be talking about Los Angeles. <laughs> Um, my apologies for those of you in the audience who are hoping for a little California dreaming on this muggy Mitaka day. No, um, LA are the initials of a very close friend. A friend who is old and has been with me most of my life. A friend who will outlast me. LA is a critical sort of person. I'm here, I, he's here, he's always also quite compassionate. Um, LA is um, capacious and interesting and gregarious and well-connected. LA doesn't have all the answers to my questions, but LA always is there to share with me an approach. So dear LA, I hope you are well. I am writing today to say thank you. When did we first meet, LA? I'm not quite sure. Did I learn about you through something I read or was it our initial encounter that is, was it in the dance studio where my mother taught ballet four days a week. Or perhaps LA, it was on that occasion that I brought a microscope home from school so that I could look into it and see the life inside a drop of pond water. When did I meet you, LA? Perhaps it was a little, bit, a little while later, in seventh grade in middle school, when I had a hand in assisting our, um, when you had a hand, I should say, in assisting our um, class to have, be assigned the Tempest, followed by Golding's Lord of the Flies, and then Orwell's Animal Farm, and then Aldous Huxley's Brave New World. Power, human nature, satire, utopia, LA, you never were afraid to throw things together and offer no clear logic or explanation. Perhaps, in fact, that is where our true friendship began. Our bonds were formed through these kinds of connections, curious connections. Do you remember, LA, the time when I was in high school it was back in the mid-1980s, LA, you inspired a bunch of us, me and my friends, to reach beyond what our classroom at that time could provide us. It was the end of the Cold War. Um, and um, after some heated school debates about campus recruitment by the US military, the question you raised in us all was what we really knew about the Soviet Union. What we really knew about a society and people whom we were told as Americans that we stood in opposition to. Yes, LA, I think that you should be credited with giving us 
the idea to invite that group of Soviet diplomats and their families to our regional high school. It didn't turn out to be easy, though. From that experience, we learned that our high school is actually inside a red zone. These are places where Soviet citizens weren't allowed to go during the Cold War because there were sensitive military missile de defense detection systems nearby. But LA, you were hard at work on our behalf, assisting us to find a way around those restrictions that involved getting us to meet up at another high school in the next county where there wasn't a red zone. A few years later, during my junior year in college, I would find myself in the Soviet Union, thanks to you, LA. I entered my university with interests, but no singular encompassing passion. What I did have a sense for LA when I went to college was what I lacked and what I lacked access to in my past educational experience. Russian language and studio art. So I began taking Russian and doing art, particularly printmaking. I wasn't brilliant at either. I certainly wasn't very good at Russian. But I realized through my struggles with a foreign language that the real reason I was studying Russian was not to put it to rest, but to put it to use, to appreciate how learning a new tongue, how learning a new tongue is actually a way of opening windows and doors to more ideas, new encounters, and unexpected experiences. It was you, LA, who stood by when I applied to a study abroad program in the Soviet Union in 1990, and who traveled with me in August of 1991, when I flew from Boston to Washington, DC, then to Helsinki, and finally to Moscow, where I lived for a year. Now, 1991 was not just any year in the history of the Soviet Union. When I entered that country, my passport was stamped with the mark of the Soviet Union. When I left a year later, that stamp and the nation's name had changed not once, but twice. While in Moscow, I studied Russian language, literature, history, politics, even art. But I felt that my real classroom was on the street. Leaving my dorm and that group of students, American compatriots, who were counting down the days until they could go back to their home universities, I instead explored. I went to the parks and the marketplaces. I visited people's homes in rural, visit in rural villages. I also, of course, went to McDonald's. I then sought out the post offices where I could mail letters to friends and family recounting my adventures. This was still, remember, the time before Wi-Fi, laptops, and email. Um, I found that much of what I'd been studying about Russia back in my home university was not immediately useful or applicable to the life that I was living um, in Moscow. Ralph Waldo Emerson, an American philosopher, has written, I embrace the common. I explore and sit at the feet of the familiar, the low. Give me insight into today, and you may have the antique and future worlds. LA, you helped me take these words to heart. I began to collect books and stories, folklore, that was written and rewritten during the Soviet period. One character that I encountered a lot was the fool or the durak. 
I don't know what attracted me to the fool, this character in these stories. Perhaps it was because I often felt like one living in Moscow, making mistakes, trying to make myself understood, having things eventually work out for me. When I returned to my home, University, LA, you suggested that I turn these folk tales into a senior thesis project. And thus was born a book that has never been published that combined Russian folk tales in translation illustrated with woodblock prints. In the process of doing my thesis, printmaking took over my life. LA, you encouraged me to reach out to that Japanese woodblock artist in Boston. It was that artist who inspired me to look abroad for the next stage. As my graduation neared, some of my classmates at LA were beginning their careers in business or furthering their studies and professional programs. I got a teaching job. in rural Japan, and I lived there for three years in a small community among the rice fields between the Mogami River and the foothills of Mount Chokai. Now, I did not speak Japanese, LA. I had no teacher training. I had no friends. I had no family nearby. By all accounts, this was the worst career move in my life. LA, what was your answer? No problem. LA, you reminded me to trust, to trust in myself, and to trust in that intrinsic and transformative potential of experience, of being with other people. It didn't matter that I didn't speak Japanese. I could learn Japanese. Indeed, one thing I did know how to learn was other languages. And once you know a language, you are never really alone. I ended my first full-time job, my first full-time job in Japan as well, in 1996. 20 years later, I am still in Japan. I stand before you on this stage. Japan, as you can see, has not left me. In the course of two decades, LA, your support and occasional provocations to trust myself, to observe, interact, and see the riches in everyday life to believe in experience as both method and a catalyst for generating new perspectives and knowledge about our world has helped me. It has not erased doubt or removed instability from my life. Rather, LA, your support has made me look at change itself. I've come to appreciate change as the protagonist of human life and culture. I fell into anthropology. I fell into this discipline that I teach here on this campus. I think, too, you pushed me. My experiences living in rural Japan sensitized me to how the things that I had taken for granted also can come to be taken for granted in other societies. What epitomized this for me has been the convenience store or kombini. I, to be honest with you, have worked in these stores. I have interviewed their owners. I have read about them in the newspapers. I have drawn them. And yes, I've even collected their material culture. When it came time to teach anthropology to students, I came back here to Japan. Not alone as I had been 
when I went to Japan for the first time, but this time I came with my family. L.A., you were, of course, with me, too. L.A., you um, have visited my lectures in this hall. Um, you've accompanied, accompanied me on my research, and you've helped me with so many other duties as well. You know what? This letter isn't done. I haven't finished this letter. I am still writing it today, and you are helping me, L.A. So, who is L.A.? Who is this mysterious friend who has inspired me? Who is this friend um, who has challenged me? Who is this friend who has cultured me? Who is this friend who's cultured in me an approach, an orientation toward this world? Who is this friend who has not provided me with clear-cut answers or a simple way forward? L.A., in fact, is not a person but an idea. L.A. L.A. <laughs> is liberal arts. Liberal arts cannot be reduced to a teacher, a class, or a college curriculum. It is an ideal, like this letter, that we as human beings continue to work on and continue to compose every day. At the very heart of liberal arts is trust not trusting others as much as trusting ourselves. As Rolf Waldo Emerson put it in his essay, Self-Reliance, we are not the same person over time. Who we are tomorrow may be different from who we are today, may be different from who we will be um, in the uh, sorry, who we were in the past. Liberal arts has instilled in me an appreciation of this truth, that liberal arts um, is an openness to experience. Liberal arts has pressured me not just to mirror what I observe, but to be capacious in the transformation that is possible by experience um, in this world and creatively responding to the world and all it has to offer. And now for a slight PS. This letter is not to liberal arts. It's not to LA. This letter is, in fact, a gift, a way of transcribing into words something that is a part of me and making it part of this world, something I would like to share. This letter is not intended for an idea. This letter is intended for all of you. Teaching in Japan, I have on occasion been asked to define liberal arts, and I can't do it. All I can say, the best answer I have, um, is that liberal arts is really about experience. It's grabbing on to experiences, embracing uncertainty, um, because, in a sense, you trust yourself. And you can re be reassured that liberal arts is with you every step of the way, that the journey you take with it um, means that you are never alone. Yours truly, Gavin Whitelock.